I'm here with Jean Donaldson and we are going to talk about motivation in dog training, which is an important topic and also super interesting and one that we both love. So Jean, to start, I just wanted to ask you, what motivates your current dog, Brian? Brian, he's small and his, his main thing is food. Um, it took a little bit of finesse to, to even get that up and running. And by finesse, I mean early on, I had to close the economy. Uh, now he's hooked on training, so he's pretty foodie. Sometimes, you know, I can get him to do stuff for like a belly rub or something, but it, it's, it's stretching things. So he's a food dog. Okay. And, and how is this different from your uh, previous dogs? Tell oh, us hugely. Dogs. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I, the, the immediate predecessor to him was a, a chow. And so that was, that was the same, same deal. Uh, but before that, I was in Border Collies for 20 years. And so, I mean, the driveiness was just, it was like, a, like easy, easy. They would do anything just for a toss-up, a toy, or for fetch, or for tug. Um, and, and they loved food, and they loved everything. So um, it was a rude, sh it was a rude, the rude shock was really going from the Border Collies to the chow. From the chow to Brian was, was smooth sailing. <laughs> You're already prepared. Mm-hmm. Okay, so because motivation is such an important topic when we're talking about dog training, um, and it seems like if you look at the popular literature about dogs, uh, it really chastises people for yeah. training with food, and then it, it almost chastises dogs for needing to be motivated. So I just, it, because you've, you know, you've worked with people for so long, and you, I'm sure you have a lot of great messages, so what, how do you, what's your messaging to people about pushing back against that? It's so, I mean, I don't think there's anything more important that we can do. I mean, I know there's like a lot of big ticket items, but getting people to just sort of, you know, get their knickers out of a bunch of motivation, this, you know, this whole business of free lunch, that the dog should just do it or just do it because, or just do it to please them or just do it. Basically, it's all these ways of dressing up free lunch. Um, and you know, that, that, that is, if owners could get their head around that and say, you know what, I'm going to absolutely pull out the punches and do what's necessary and get my dog motivated, we're so far along. Um, I, I don't think there is anything more important. No, no. So one of my favorite um, sort of metaphors for sort of trying to sort of get the message out there that dogs need to be motivated is about weeding in the garden. I think this was one that you came up with. So the metaphor, or sort of the story, it's an analogy goes like, okay, so if you're good at weeding, if you do a lot of weeding, and here in, you know, on the farm in Manitoba, I get to talk about things like Canada thistle, like the really pokey, terrible weed. No. We have nettle, and anyway, it's not good. And I run an organic farm, so this one's very personal to me. So it's sort of like, okay, mm. so, if you're good at weeding, if we get dogs to the point where they're good at the behavior, shouldn't we fade the food? How I present it to my class students is, okay, so at some point, class, um, if your weeding behavior is really good, I'm just gonna fade the vegetables. So you'll have to keep weeding in perpetuity, right. but there's not gonna be any vegetables or flowers come from, coming from your garden at all. And I almost always see this, oh, this look of like, oh, I get it. So yeah. it's, it's even, okay. even you're gonna weed, 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 but the weeds are still gonna be there. You're just gonna keep doing the behavior. Because I'm going to say good weeding. Yeah, yeah, and don't don't you respect me? Like, why why won't you come to my farm and keep weeding? Because we like each other. Yeah, so it, I, I I think that always really helps to hammer home the the motivation thing. So I know that's my favorite. About say again. Behaviors about outcomes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So do, that's my favorite of your sort of analogies about motivation. So do you have any other good ones that you want to share? I mean, I think that gardening one is is pretty good. Not everybody gardens, but I think people would even get their head around it. Um, I like stuff like you know uh, baking. Uh, you bake, but you don't get any baked goods. You know, you cook, oh, but you don't get yeah. any meal. You know, uh, you, pay, you put put some money, um, and uh, you know, you pump gas in your car, um, and you you know, you put them you put in your credit card. You pump the gas, but then you get intermittent gas. Like, you know, every one time out of five, you actually get gas in your car. The other four times you don't, but you know, you should really keep putting in your credit card and you know, stuff like that, I think is good. Or you walk around Target or you walk around Canadian Tire, um, you put stuff in your basket, you get to the cash, you pay your money and then you get home, but you have no stuff. Cause you know, you should get your stuff because you know, uh, you've learned the behavior of shopping. You're very fluent at shopping now, so you don't yeah. get the stuff. I mean, that is basically it. So there's also a sort of a dark side about motivation that I wanted to talk to you about. So what is it about motive? Like what, what is it that worries you that keeps you up at night about the whole motivation question? 
Well, well, the dark side, I mean, when we talk about the dark side in training, we mean the, you know, people who use aversives. And I think they're feeling increasingly cornered because, our, you know, the good guys are increasingly visible, increasingly competent, increasingly sort of politically, you know, uh, aligned with the, our culture at large. And so I think that, um, you know, these trainers are, are aware that eh, they need to kind of obfuscate what they're doing. Um, and so they, you know, they, they talk about stuff like correction, energy, leadership, all these kind of weasel speak words to, to, because they don't really don't want to say, yeah, you know what, I'm, I'm actually more comfortable using pain, or I don't know how to use rewards, or, or, you know, I want to capitalize on your wish for free lunch, so we're going to hurt his neck, but we'll call it respect, you know, or, or, or whatever. So, you know, that one keeps me up at night. Like, there's still, in 2018, when we're, when we're taping this, legions of dogs um, who are getting basically hardware around their necks completely needlessly when and the owner has not been informed the another's is not informed consent the trainer has not said well you know you could achieve the same outcome with you know the uh, you know five bucks worth of chicken um, and and the own you know and and that's not being unpacked but I think also I mean on our side you know, I think we're aiding and abetting because we're we're enabling sort of this free lunch mentality with our being apologetic about food with all our, our huge rush. So many trainers on the good side are kowtowing to this sort of desire to, you know, well, you know, pretty soon we can fade the food, pretty soon we can use life rewards, pretty soon we can use variable schedules. And the undercurrent, I mean, the, the implication there is that it's kind of bad and that this is you know i know you don't want it and i don't want it either and we all want to kind of get away from this and, yeah. and you know, as soon as we can do so better and but there is a way we can do this why not stop apologizing why not saying you know um and saying basically completely stop apologizing and say yeah we carry chicken along with poop bags yay motivation team you know and, and that's just how it is um you know it's like the, we don't expect the poop to magically lift itself but we expect the motivation to be magical and i think the more we can push back against that just frankly and i think the gardening you know cooking shopping stuff is is the way to go that we you know a dogs are, are properly functioning living organisms and that's totally okay doesn't mean that they don't love us yeah yeah exactly yeah i love the the um, fuel tank analogy that's yeah, so true yeah yeah very yeah variable gas yeah so i often finish up my gardening analogy in my classes by saying okay so there you know there's also this other side how would you feel if you came to my farm and i said i'm gonna you know you're gonna weed some canada thistle for me um but then i'll give you vegetables and then when they get here i hold a gun to their dog's head or i i, I <laughs> shock them with a cattle prod and i say now you're gonna weed and you know and does this build a relationship and we're likely to, to recommend my classes to uh, someone else you know is this somehow better or more moral that's right, right? yeah 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 you know um and that is it's i mean and that's not it that's not hyperbole that's exactly what 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 trainers are out there doing they're out there using protection rackets and, and electric shock and and you know strangulation and so on yeah. and calling it respect and relationship i mean yeah yeah it's trying but I, I agree with you i see more and more just that it people are hiding they're hiding prong collars underneath um pretty fabric you know we're, they're, they're, they're running scared yeah. so i think we're we are winning yeah yeah their, their backs are to the wall yeah and here for this course um we have people who i think by the end of it they're going to be very comfortable having some cookies in their pocket so that when the people come over and their dogs don't jump there could be cookies and these dogs tend to like FaceTime too. So if they get, you know, the, the guests, if they're comfortable being smooched yep. by a dog, they can crouch down and reinforce yep. them like that way too. Yep. Yep. You've got them. We, you know, it's, it's so ironic that we, you know, dogs are such cheap dates and yet we still don't cough it up, you know? Yeah. I mean, we could have a species that was really, really difficult to motivate, you know, um, that, you know, they eat seldom or they don't like food or they don't like anything. And dogs are relatively easy and yet we manage to mess it up. <laughs> right. Yeah. But no more. No more. Right. Yeah. No, we'll keep the point. I'm so glad that, I'm so glad that you've included motivation as a piece of this course. All right. All right. Okay. Well, it's important. It's important with these dogs, just like all other dogs. All dogs. All okay. organisms. Right. Well, thank you so much, Jean, for talking to us about motivation. Pleasure.